Okay, so if you watched AEW Dynamite, you probably saw what a lot of people are talking about even today. I mean, it's got the whole wrestling world talking, if you will. Wrestling fans, journalists, you know, um, Hall of Famers, legends. It's got everybody talking. Uh, basically, last night, AEW Dynamite presented Winter is Coming, a special edition of their, you know, weekly show. And it was headlined by two things. Headlined by two things. One, we saw the AEW debut of Sting um, for the company, where we also found out that he signed a multi-year contract to be with them full time. So he'll be there on a weekly basis, you know, every week um, going forward. And then the other big news was Kenny Omega winning the AEW World Championship from John Moxley, but doing it in very controversial, screw job finishing, uh, a screw job finishing kind of way. Basically, what happened, long story short, is Don Callis, uh, for the second time in this, what, less than a month, uh, was on commentary for a Kenny Omega match, mostly this time for the world title match that he had earned by winning uh, the tournament that he did back at Full Gear. Now, with that said, uh, basically, Don Callis played a huge role in what happened last night. Don Callis was on commentary, then he went down the ringside, tried to make it sound like he wanted to get the match stopped because Kenny was hurt. John Moxley wouldn't hear any of it. And in the confusion, or in the distraction, Kenny was slipped a microphone, I guess you could say, by Don Callis, or Don Callis kind of threw the microphone into the ring when he got decked by John Moxley. And what happened was, Kenny took the mic, and as soon as uh, Moxley turned around, he nailed Moxley right in the head with it real hard, busted him open, then proceeded to hit several V-triggers um, on Moxley, and then hit him with the one-winged angel to become the new champ. Now what happened afterwards is Callus got up, like nothing really affected him, got in the ring, grabbed the championship, you know, really quickly, like just, you know, you know, just pulled it away a, from the referee, handed it to Omega, you know, and everybody, the commentating team's going like, wait a minute, something doesn't seem right here, something smells fishy, and then all of a sudden, you have Omega and Callus going out of the ring, going through what is considered the... Uh, backstage area, the heel entrance, whatever, and you got a lot of people in the backstage area. You got, um, you know, you got uh, the wrestlers, backstage personnel. You got Tony Khan, uh, depending on how you, you know, you saw him on camera. You know, you got a lot of people in AEW, including the elite, including members of the elite, the Young Bucks, the uh, tag team champions, that are not happy with what's going on, and then. Basically, as they're going out to the outside, escaping the scene of the crime, as Excalibur put it, uh, basically, um, Alex Marvez catches up to them and asks, you know, what the heck was that about? And Don Callis says, hey, you want the answers? Tune in Tuesday and you'll get them. And Marvez is like, but Dynamite's not on Tuesday. And then that's when Callis drops the bomb. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, it's Tuesdays. Impact Wrestling on Access TV. And that right there floored a lot of fans. It floored me, it floored just Alex, formerly Deluxe Man, it floored the Schlag Daddy, OTR Central, it floored Don Tony, it floored Sala Monster, it floored Greg Morgan, good mic work, it floored anybody that, you know, has been covering wrestling for quite some time, I'm if you will, uh, it, it floored them basically. Uh, sorry about that, but it, like I said, it floored them when um, Don Callis made that announcement before getting in the car with Omega and driving off. And I love the saying JR, and I love the uh, saying that JR puts out there as they're driving off, as they're getting in the car and driving off. He's like, We've just been jobbed. In other words, He's saying they've just been, you know, screwed out of their championship by a rival promotion. Now, I don't know where this is going because apparently Omega is going to 
you know, make his intentions clear on impact as to why this happened. Um, you know, there's a lot of speculation, you know, one of the top speculations and I'm sure a lot of people are having is when you kind of connect the dots, could we be seeing a bullet club invasion of both impact and AEW? I mean, cause you think about it, you have Omega who is friends, you know, with the young bucks who are the tag champs of AEW. You have him as friend. You have him as you have you you have you know you have him as friend as a friend to the Good Brothers, the OC, you know Gallows and Anderson. Which oh by the way, a lot of Impact pers uh, talent went on Twitter and basically said, hey, do you are we real to you now? Do you notice us now? And and I th and that was Sammy Callahan. And then you have Carl Anderson saying. Something like, it's good to have friends and all that. So it makes you wonder and speculate, are we getting a Bullet Club um, invasion? Are we getting the Bullet Club here in the U.S. to try to take over both Impact Wrestling and AEW, two of the biggest companies outside of WWE? Are we getting that coming to the forefront? Because again, you got to think about the, 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 that the dots, easy for me to say, the dots are kinda, can, can kind of connect there. Uh, you know, you got members of the Bullet Club in the Good Brothers, founding members, that is, in the Good Brothers, um, as the tag champs of Impact. You got founding members of the Bullet Club in the Bucks, you know, uh, basically the tag champs of AEW. You have your world champion of AEW, Kenny Omega, who was once a leader of the Bullet Club, one of the more successful leaders. And you also have Cody Rhodes, who people wonder exactly when and where his heel turn is going to happen. So there's a lot of pieces that can come into play. Now, the other speculation as well is from a storyline perspective, maybe Impact Management is sick and tired of AEW still in the spotlight for them. And maybe the explanation will be, hey, we were the second biggest company before you guys came along and took the spotlight away from us, there's only room for one. So maybe it's that. Maybe it's a storyline of Impact Wrestling, you know, plotting for over a year and a half to get at AEW for taking away the spotlight, taking away the status as the number one, or in, the, in their minds, in the Impact Wrestling fans' minds, or the number two overall wrestling promotion away and giving it to them. So that could be it. And maybe from a business perspective, it's just a talent exchange. Maybe it's just like, hey, we need to expand our rosters and everything. And, and, and when you think about it, if that's the case, cool. You know, maybe this is what AEW wants to do. May, because in reality, when you really think about it, what AEW is doing is they're sending a message to the WWE. They're saying, hey, look, we're doing something you're too scared to do. You're scared to get involved with other promotions. You're scared to associate and let your talent go elsewhere. And when you think about it, it might even be a slap in the face of them saying, hey, our talents are independent contractors. Really? Well, if they're independent contractors, then why aren't you letting them compete elsewhere? So that might be another reason this is happening. We don't know. But yeah, this is big news, and we can only find out more this Tuesday. Yes, it is partially, partially when you think about a publicity stunt by Impact to get attention on them, but we'll have to see how they go forward with the storyline um, as the week goes on and we head into Tuesday. But let me know what you guys think about it down below. Comment if you like, and I will talk to you all later.